No, I was like a Jim Morrison imitation. It just did not fuck. It didn't work out for me at all. I have to be on fire. Um, welcome to ShmooCon. This is how good my Photoshop is. I was able to do that. Um, if you look at your program, you'll see the original art. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, um, uh, I'm Bruce the Society. Uh, we are the, I guess, people that the front of ShmooCon, but there's a lot of other volunteers we'll get to in a bit. Um, but normally, wow, I'm getting like feedback too, man. This yeah, is trippy. Like we better, dude? He's kind of looking at me funny. All right, we're good. Hey, are we streaming, streamers? Yay, two thumbs up, three thumbs up, we're hot. Um, first of all, our advanced persistent threat at the conference today is the bubbles. Um, <laughs> they are very persistent. I, I don't think I had realized how persistent they would be. Um, so a couple issues. One, I don't think these lights are going to get along with big, wet bubble things hitting them. So we're just going to say no to in the presentation rooms. And in general, I don't know how toxic they are. They were really cheap. Um, <laughs> It said like made in DPRK, I really don't know. Um, so, you know, if you please use some discretion with the bubbles, the hotel, like blowing them in the restaurant, that's probably not gonna fly. I mean, they will fly, but it won't. Um, sometimes I'm funny. Um, so this is the kickoff. Um, uh, it's a little bit of a logistical thing and a little bit of a soapbox for myself um, and then a little bit of time for Heidi to, she won't say anything. Um, Who's been to ShmooCon before? Well, it's about a little over half. That's pretty good. We got a lot of new folks. Um, some of you we kick out, but we keep, they keep showing up. Right, Branson? Sorry, you were late to my talk, man. I don't know what to say. Um, so first, uh, for those that don't know, we've had basically the same talk format from ShmooCon 1, maybe 2. We rearranged it a little bit. Three tracks. Um, so Friday today, we do like a plenary short talk. 20 minutes, ask some questions, hook them off stage, do the next one. Uh, tomorrow we break apart into three tracks. Um, we're going to have, um, this, is, this is not right, is it? Oh, I, yeah. Well, I'm not going to reach down there. <laughs> she says she's not going to reach down there. My parents, oh. my parents that's, that's the wrong side of the card. Oh, geez. So, OK, one track mine, and it, or Bring It On will be in here. Uh, you can all, uh, Carson's rattling off the photos of that. <laughs> Um, anyway, and then the biggest thing is Sunday we're going to um, I'll, I'll point. So uh, bring it on, uh, belay it, and build it. Just remember that. When you get to that room over there, this, I swear to God, this is a little confusing. You just have to like go all around, around this football and then pop in. A lot of people walk in this door over here and get confused and be like, it looks just like the other room. <laughs> it is. Just go one more door down and it'll be all the way down. Um, and then build it will be, um, uh, be over there. So, uh, and then Sunday, um, for those of you that remember, we used to do this wacky, like, take a break and we reconstitute the room and it was chaos. We don't need to do that because this can hold all of us. So Sunday we start in three tracks and we finish with the plenary and closing remarks in here. Cool? Head nod. Cool. All right. Um, a couple other things. For those that haven't been here before, um, we do uh, this thing called ScrewCon Labs, which is, we don't do training. Okay? There's a lot of conferences you can go to. You can pay a couple thousand dollars, get smart, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Um, we don't really, we don't run ShmooCon to make money, we do this for fun, we try to do this for the community, and we couldn't find a way to make the conventional uh, information security training model make sense, right? Because trainers don't want to come in and give two days of training for free, or basically free, um, because that's valuable to them, it's their course material and whatever, um, and, and what we ended up doing is saying, all right, well, what do we need as a con? Well, we need a, we need a network, right? So let's do like a totally overblown production of a network. So this isn't just Wi-Fi, like this is Wi-Fi with intrusion monitoring and there's IPv6 and there's data visualization and there's all kinds of services offered and whatever. So in two days time, uh, people come in, they uh, uh, kind of newbies get paired up with mentors in different areas for, uh, you know, wireless and, and uh, you know, wired networking and all the other components. And they're able to learn by building an enterprise scale network with real enterprise tools from all the labs vendors to be able to come in and build that network up and make it work in basically 36 hours. It's hot right now? Yeah. Yep, it's hot right now. So um, here's the network information that I took from last year's slides and I presume to be correct, but probably isn't. So no, heads up, eh, whatever. It's close. You know, with wireless, what could go wrong? It's close. Schmookon romp, not double down. We, so we went a little more randy. That's uh, that's good. Um, 
Anyway, the labs are all the way at the other end of the hall. Feel free to stop by if you're not participating in the labs, ask questions, take a look at what they've got set up. If you are interested in participating in the labs, uh, you can apply next year to attend. Here's the deal. ShmooCon is an exercise in reading comprehension. And this goes for everyone. When you're an attendee and you try to buy tickets, we say on the ticket registration page, the link is going to show up here, right on this page. Just reload it and it'll show up. People will email, where's the link going to be? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to stand up a honeypot server just for you that just owns you as soon as you connect to it. Like, that's it. <laughs> if you ask that question, I'm going to pop your box. Um, so uh, uh, vendors, we have vendors. We have lots of sponsors. We'll get into that in a minute. Sponsors get a very formal letter from Heidi that's here's all the things that we expect. Uh, be nice. She's like, don't rip on the sponsors too badly. But be like, you know, that we'll ask you, hey, you need to send us your logo because I've been in a large corporation and I've had people like just snag the logo off the website and print it in some print material and it looks like crap and then my marketing people get rah, 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 rah. like you can't do that, right? Like that makes us look bad. So we say, we're not going to go get your logo, you're going to send it to us. A month and a half later, the vendor will contact us and be like, hey, where the hell's our logo? We want our money back. But no one's ever wanted their money back, but they get pretty grumpy about it. We're like, you never sent it to us. There was an email. There was like four things at the top that you had to do and you've done none of them, right? Shut up. Um, <laughs> that's nice. Um, and <laughs> I could get more aggressive. Like, so, um, and even with labs, like the attendance uh, uh, to get into labs, all we ask is you to articulate why you want to participate. It's not that it has to be uh, you know, anything compli late. complicated. You're like, Jesus. <laughs> oh, the, the fancy DJs are showing up late. <laughs> like, um, we just ask you to articulate. Answer a couple questions. Do you have a ticket already? Why do you want to be here? I don't, honestly, I don't really care why. I just want you to spend time thinking about it. Like, going through the thought process of why do I care should be a filter for yourself. Like, if you can't figure out how to write a paragraph about why you want to care about participating in labs, maybe you shouldn't come, <laughs> right? Um, it's not hard. When I, I used to work, I worked at Booz Allen for four years. For, for those, <laughs> yikes. <laughs> There was a little bit of goodwill that I built up left. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, when I got people come to me and want to go to training, and, and I'm, I'll be like, well, write a justification. They're like, well, what do I have to do? I'm like, just write me something. And people get all bent out of shape. I'm like, if you spend the time to write, like, two paragraphs about why you want to go to training, I'll send you, okay? I don't care if it's not even grammatically correct. Like, just spend the time and the effort. And that's all we ask for for most of what we do for the con. And I would encourage you, in your job, and when you interact with other cons, to please, please just read the directions. Do you have a question? It's supposed to come at the end. It is supposed to come at the end, but I get, it ebbs and flows. So, um, you know, try the network out uh, and the veal. Anyway, um, so, so you can stand wherever you want. Um, anyway, so um, we do limit the number of sponsors that come to the con, just like we limit the number of attendees. Uh, and, and part of that is, we want sponsorship at the conference to be mutually beneficial. Um, we don't need the money from the sponsors to run the conference, right? We are, I mean, to be brutally honest, we are in the uh, kind of most advantageous position known to mankind when it comes to running a conference. Because we know we're going to sell out, we know how many tickets we're going to get, and we know to the penny how much money we're going to get from attendees in advance. And we know we could run the whole damn con on that. And, and, now, they're not gonna buy and now they're not going to buy tickets. Yeah, right. They'd be like, screw you, buddy. Let's <laughs> troll them. Yeah, right. Um, the sponsorship's just to do added nicer things, right? And so it allows us the flexibility to say, no, we're going to have a limited number of sponsors. There's going to be three platinums, four golds, you know, whatever. Um, but we do that because we want the people out there that are sponsoring to have a good experience. But we also want you as attendees to have a good experience from the sponsorship. It should be a mutually beneficial thing. And I don't mean like, who's got the coolest swag? I mean, you should be able to learn something. You should be able to experience something from ShmooCon sponsors. And that's something that we push all our sponsors to. Sometimes they hit it, sometimes they don't. Um, you know, it, it just depends. But that's our philosophy. And that's something, again, we hope and, and we would encourage others to try to carry forward in other events. There's a lot of B-Sides folks here. And you guys live on sponsorship, right? Like, that's your whole freaking universe. And you require that same kind of, like, let's make this mutually beneficial. Uh, we've seen that work really well. But on the flip side, we'll get big companies coming to us at the 11th hour being like, here's a bunch of money. Let me in. And we get to say no. 
Um, which is weird, because a lot of those companies aren't used to being told no, and then they get a little grumpy. Um, and it's actually, to be honest, kind of fun. Um, <laughs> so and, and at the end of the day, like, you can get ranty about like, vendors and you know, all this kind of nonsense about vendor shows. This, like, I hate, people like, get grumpy about, like, oh, this thing's turning into a trade show. Like, go to a real trade show sometime. Like, a real honest to God, go to CES and look at the companies that are buying like $20,000 booths and they're in a trailer in the back parking lot. That's a trade show, right? Nothing in this industry, modulo RSA, really looks that much like a trade show. <laughs> I want to encourage you not to demonize these people, but try to find, if you have a problem, like, I think the firewall market is a commodity-based pile of shit, I would like to make it better, go talk to the firewall companies and try to make it better. Just an example, I wasn't saying it's true, man. <laughs> oh, I, oh, she's already giving me a warning on time. Uh, I'm on slide three. Uh, um, T-shirt charities. So, um, Here's the deal what we do with t-shirts. We give the t-shirts effectively to HFC and EFF. What you do then is provide a donation to them and you get a t-shirt in exchange. So we don't actually sell t-shirts. We don't want to pay DC sales tax, things like that. Um, it's much easier for it just to be a donation. So what you do is you go into Reg at 4 p.m. Two? Did it already start? Anybody buy a t-shirt already? Okay, then it's four o'clock because it's after two, so. Um, <laughs> So at 4 o'clock, you can go into registration, you give them 15 bucks, they're going to give you a t-shirt and a token, you put the token in the bucket that you want to give your money to, and then all that money goes to that charity. So that's how we run t-shirt, it works very well, um, so please go uh, donate for t-shirts. In the same vein, sometimes we have extra t-shirts. Oh, shocker. First of all, I would like to talk about the t-shirts. I make a lot of the t-shirt designs. Heidi will have an idea, I'll sit there and I'll bash my face against Illustrator and Photoshop for a while and eventually I'll figure out how to do it. Most of the graphic arts for ShmooCon, I do. Most, not all, but like the, the cover art this year, I did, I did last year's cover art. Like, this, if anybody wants to hire a graphic designer, like, I'm on the market. Um, I start, yeah. Yeah. perfect. Uh, Oh, it's my son. I was wondering, like, where the hell did that come from? That it went all the way over here. Um, he was ripping on you, honey. I was ripping on him. So, um, you know, I started using Corel doing this, like, in ShmooCon 1. Anyone remember the ShmooCon 1 badges? There were a smiley face that said ShmooCon. That was his sophisticated... Anonymous attendee. Anonymous attendee, sorry. I was as sophisticated as I could be at the time. Um, I still constantly learn things of the t-shirts. And my favorite t-shirt, for all the wrong reason, is the green one from like three years ago with the bar, uh, there's like a bar graph on it. There's like a frequency graph of some kind. I don't know what the hell it was. Anyone have that one? On? Does anybody, Does anybody have, have it on? with on? Is that it? Does it have like four bars on it? Yes. Yes. Do you mind bringing that up here? <laughs> so. So this is going to be really hard to see for anyone. Um, so let's make it. <laughs> so there's these uh, three or four barcodes. ShmooCon 2012, heart rate beats per minute, sleep, uh, walk, run, and ShmooCon ticket sales. Ha ha ha, cute little joke, you know, we made this t-shirt. Well, I was trying to figure out how to make things snap to grid, which is really complicated. <laughs> And it wasn't snapping the grid the way I wanted, so I made this little space here, which was just another little rectangle that I used to space all these things out. And then I moved it to the bottom of the artboard, and then I forgot it was there. <laughs> so I went to print, and it comes back, and we got this little rectangle right kind of above your navel that just sits there. <laughs> we sold 200 of the things. Some guy sold one on eBay the other day. I was like, So anyway, please buy the t-shirts, <laughs> help, help the starving artist. Because um, what happens when they don't, uh, we end up with a storage unit full of stuff, uh, euphemistically called crap. Um, periodically we get together, we take all the crap, we put it into a bag, and you get to buy the crap for 10 bucks. Um, it's, it's really old Schmoocon bag, everything from the ice scrapers that were pre Snowmageddon uh, to older Schmoo balls or water bottles. Some of them are really good, some of them are pretty crappy, uh, some of them are going to be really weird, but you'll be rewarded for it. So um, you decide where you want your money to go. 
Uh, and, but they are labeled, like if they're t-shirts, if there's sizes, so at least you know you're not getting like a random size associated uh, with the bag of crap. So please help FDR Storage Unit buy a bag of crap. I assure you it'll be worth your while. If you get one of those green shirts, you can come find me. We'll exchange it for something, I guess. I don't know. Um, I think that's it. So um, also, uh, Black Hat's coming up. Uh, so not, not the conference. It was kind of, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that joke's already been done to death, I'm sure. Um, here's what we've done. We bought an entire theater in Georgetown for an 8 o'clock showing tonight. Uh, not, well, an entire auditorium. auditorium. What's the difference? A theater would imply all the auditoriums. I, I'm not up on the lingo of a movie facility. Um, OK, jeez. I love you. Uh, <laughs> so we bought an entire auditorium. Um, at the AMC Theater in Georgetown. Uh, you can go to the HFC booth, you can donate 20 bucks to AHFC or EFF, and then go see a show with a bunch of hackers at the uh, uh, Georgetown uh, AMC Theater. So uh, if you want, I would, um, I guess they're taking them now? Um, yeah, so they're selling them now. The deal with this is the, um, it was originally the 7.30 showing, they pushed it back to eight o'clock for us. And because I was like, oh, keynote ends at 7.30, not sure if there's gonna be enough time, they took out the trailer package, so they're going to start the movie at 8.15. So it starts at 8.15 prompt, even though the ticket says 8 o'clock, I believe. But if you get there between 8 and 8.15, you should be um, there on time for this. So for those that don't know, there's a movie called Black Hat, uh, <laughs> starring, what, Jake Gyllenhaal? Thor! Thor, Jesus Christ! Who's that guy from Cheers? What's the actor's name? Norm! No, 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 what's his real name? Norm! <laughs> what's Thor's real name? Chris Helmsworth? All right, he was the hottest man alive, according to people. Yeah. See, look at that! Like, I knew who he was. I was just messing with you. All right, uh, anyway, so 8 o'clock, go see a movie. Um, other goings on, we used to like roll through all of these, but it got to be too many to mention, so I'm just gonna mention them. Um, Gonna, there's a lot of contests that are run here. Uh, how many people have participated in one of the contests over the years at Shmukon? Uh, yeah, a number of people. So there's lots of good contests that go on here. Uh, there's barcode contests that you, who's got the most creative barcode. I still contend, I think it was Adrian that had the laser. Yes. So just. A, I don't know. The entries this year are over the top. The entries this year are over the top, but I honestly didn't understand how the barcode scanner worked. Um, and I consider myself a reasonably smart person. Adrian stood from across the room. So the, the idea with barcode and smart code is who can make the coolest looking barcode that still scans, right? So there's like best dressed and best comedy. I don't know, there's a couple different classes. I can't remember what they are, um, clearly. So people make cakes and Lego things and whatever. Adrian stands across the room and says, okay, pull the trigger on the scanner. He says, okay, and he just aims something at the scanner. It goes beep, and it comes up as registering his barcode. What dark magic do you have, sir? <laughs> like, <laughs> holy crap! And he explained to me how it worked. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't get it. And like, I had to like go Wikipedia like how barcode scanners worked, which is really freaking embarrassing for me. Um, but it was like a little laser that pulsed pulse back. So as long as the trigger was pulled, it would just act like it was reflecting back the thing, and it pulsed back the code. It was absolutely amazing. So that is my favorite barcode scan of all time. Um, I did see. I saw Army Train's thing with the uns uns and the. The large, oh, is the sh large schmoo, the large white amorphous object yeah, is a, um, so, so that to be clear, many moons ago, there was a cease and desist against the schmoo group for using the name schmoo, um, because Andy Cap had this amorphous white blob in the comics called schmoo, uh, Little Abner, it was in Little Abner. Um, and so I guess uh, Cap Enterprises was trying to bring back uh, the new schmoo, and it was gonna be like a cartoon. Um, and so Shmoo, they, <laughs> Shmoo uh, uh, the Shmoo group, which then begat ShmooCon, uh, was named after, in a roundabout way, the gentleman back there who we call Shmoo. If you want to, he doesn't want to raise his hand. No, he absolutely, it, it's okay, he's waving at me. That's, that's, that's actually the guy named Shmoo. Um, and so our lawyer went toe to toe with Cap Enterprises on the cease and desist and said, look, it's a guy's nickname, it has nothing to do with it, it's you know, not confusingly similar. The logo, I swear to God, is a seal face, not designed to look like it, although it looks remarkably like the schmoo. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of us were from Alaska and it was a seal and anyway, and, and with Oakley's on and luckily we, uh, we won that. We're, well, I should say they never wrote back, which is the illegal equivalent of winning a cease and desist. So. <laughs> Yeah, and that was, that was 14 years ago, so I think we're in the clear at this point. Um, 
Anyway, this information, all this information about all these contests and everything else that's going on is in the, um, uh, in your program. I will say we're doing DCSS scanning again. Uh, for those that don't know, for those that were uh, alive during the grand DCSS case, because <laughs> there are people here who weren't born at that time, which is really frightening. Um, yeah, so uh, DCSS is the DVD decryption thing. So this is DVD John and 2600 getting sued by the MPAA and all that kind of stuff. We have all the documents from EFF associated with that trial. Uh, actually kind of interesting and important historical documents from uh, the perspective of our, of our community. They live in my storage unit. There's 85 boxes of legal documents in my storage unit. <laughs> For those that understand geometry, that's a non-trivial volume. Um, so. <laughs> We're trying to scan them through some crowdsourcing thing here so that people can get them online um, and, and uh, you know, have them archived for, for future generations and, and then hopefully get rid of the damn boxes. So uh, Jason Scott's been leading that up, but Jason is ill, so he has a backup here. Uh, I'm going to look and see. Everything okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, fire talks are just Saturday, uh, not Friday, and they are going to be <laughs> next door over there. So, um, Oh, did you something there? No, no, do I want to repeat? They don't want to hear this again. They're like, okay, that, that dude just yawned right, right there. Hi, sir. Hi, hey, what's up? <laughs> I love calling people out. My, oh my God, I gave a talk at, at Black Hat one year and this, this guy got up in the middle of my talk and like started leaving. And I'm like, what, is it boring you? And the guy turns around, it was one of my clients. And I was like, <laughs> shit, sorry, I'll just tear the contract up. Like, that's, that's all my fault. All right, so for the Saturday night party, um, we're going to be here again. Uh, so it used to be, back in the day, we would rent a bar somewhere in D.C., and there would be this mad rush for everybody to get tickets, and we only had like eight tickets available, and 10,000 people wanted to go, and complaining, and trolling, and anger, so we decided, um, Heidi Cry, it was definitely like, between ticket sales and the Saturday night party, those are like the two worst times in Heidi's life, besides the day she married me, but, um, oh, oh, see, see, she does love me. Um, <laughs> So um, what we did last year is we just said, bag it, have a party here, all ages, everyone's welcome. Uh, we're going to have an open bar for those that are of age. For if you're underage, you still get to drink, you just don't get to drink the alcohol. Surprise. Um, but um, uh, we'll be handing out tickets for mixed drink at the door. You can drink all the wine and beer you want up until uh, midnight, and then you're on your own to, to pay for it until the, they run out. Um, till 1 a.m., I guess, or until the fire alarm goes off. So. Um, <laughs> Don't give them ideas, yeah. Uh, for if you don't know what that means, talk to the person next to you. I've told enough stories already, so. Uh, Shmoo's a student. This is the second year of the Shmoo's a student program. So it's interesting. We started ShmooCon uh, for a variety of reasons, but uh, you know, most of them, if not all of them, were pretty altruistic. Uh, the people involved in the Shmoo group at the time and, and there were volunteers in helping us out feel pretty strongly about trying to demonstrably, demonstrably improve the information security community, right? That's why we're here. Um, we're trying to do the right thing. I mean, that's why we don't have a break at track anymore. It's not that we think that offensive stuff is bad, it's just that we think there's plenty of other coverage of that elsewhere, so we don't really have a detailed coverage of offensive capability versus other, uh, other conferences. Um, and, you know, so we've had a strong relationship over the years with the service academies like West Point. West Point brings a busload of cadets down every year. Um, and Naval Academy's here this year. Did you guys get in? Go Army, beat Navy. Yeah, okay, well, there's some Army people around. Um, yeah, wow. Well, oh. yeah. and, and that started. Um, and we realized a couple years ago, while there were a lot of attendees here, like RIT and Penn State and Penn College of Technology and places like that. Um, I, you just got to pander to your audience. That's all it is. Like, it's, hello, Springfield. Um, Springfield. Yeah. Last week I was at Shelbyville. Ooh. Like the eight Simpsons fans in the room get that shit. Yeah, future. Jeez, you're too young, kid. Um, it's literally a kid. Um, anyway, we realized we didn't have very good outreach to the student community at large, and so we thought what can we do? And we came up with this program, we're like, look, we'll have people sponsor students, um, and, but we're not gonna make them like actually find the student, they're just gonna say, I'm gonna pay $400 for a ticket. 400 bucks gets me and a student in and gets a student a $100 stipend. Well then we throw in $100 and they get a $200 stipend. Um, and then students apply 
and they say, you know, here's why I want to come. And again, we're not looking, this isn't like, you know, you have to prove to me that you're the most worthy, like your research is the coolest or whatever. You just have to show motivation, right? We don't want just seniors in here who have a clean, articulate point about what they want to do with their life when they graduate. Like, we want freshmen, we want high school students, we want people who are just like, I think this is really cool, I want to learn more about it. Cool, come on in, we'll pay your way, right? So, um, we had 25 people apply this year, um, 22 accepted. 25 spots. Yeah, the whole, just follow directions. Just follow, again, again. Honestly, the people who didn't make the cut didn't follow directions. Um, although, last year, still my favorite, uh, was the guy who was like, uh, he was in New Zealand, I think. Didn't really say that he was a student. Said, I really don't have proof I'm a student either, so here's a picture of some chicken. And he's just, it's like an Instagram picture of his dinner. I'm like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> no! Uh, Actually, I, I lobbied for him, but no one else wanted to. <laughs> I thought he was just an art student, you know? It's performance art. <laughs> Sorry to the art students in the room. I know it's really a thing that you do. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. Because <laughs> I, I assure you, you have more training in art than we have in security, so it's all cool. <laughs> um, and, and, but that actually gets to a, a serious point, right? So um, I, I'm a college dropout, but even when I was in college, um, Wait, wait, okay, here's the obligatory. Did anyone attend the University of Alaska Fairbanks? John, John. Did you graduate? Oh, you're, it's oh, Mossman. Like, I just <laughs> already know that. Did you graduate? Yeah. No, woohoo! Like, <laughs> no one ever graduates from that school. There's just a pit in the back with the students who didn't figure out how to run away fast enough. <laughs> um, anyway, so even today, the programs that exist in uh, the undergrad, especially at the undergraduate level, with respect to uh, information security, computer security, things of that nature, are still under really rapid development, right? I go to campuses all the time, and I see uh, uh, professors and, and the people trying to build the curriculum, running as fast as they can, trying to get a handle on this, but you got students who are spending their days on Reddit and slinging their own code and staying up to date, and a lot of times, the students are ahead of the curve of the curriculum, of the professors, of, of the university, and they're doing their own thing, and sometimes their own thing's great, and sometimes it's misguided, but damn if they're not motivated, right? And so it's, it's really tough for me to see, um, you know, hundreds of people, thousands of kids around the country who are so motivated that they spend their weekends setting up their own hacking competitions, doing outreach with the community, uh, you know, building all these programs and getting equipment to learn and all this kind of stuff and not get the support from the universities that they expect. And it's not like we can come in and like be surrogates for that, but we can provide some ex external view and extra experience to them. And so that's why, personally, I think it's so important to engage uh, the next generation, because the last thing we want them doing is doing some of the stuff that, that I did, which was totally self-educated. Sometimes I learned the right thing, but a lot of times I learned the wrong thing, and I didn't realize it until years later. Um, so, you know, let's help them prevent, you know, not make the same mistakes that we did. I always get nervous when she runs off on stage. Yeah, you can applaud that, but I, I trailed off at the end, so it's okay. It's, it didn't have that big thud factor, you know. I, w I would drop the mic, but it's very expensive, and you <laughs> took all our money, so. Um, so, uh, proceedings. This is an interesting one. Um, last year, we tried to do uh, proceedings. So this idea was that we were going to have a printed thing that you could buy or download and then cite. Because citing things at hacker cons is hard, right? At best, there's a video on YouTube. Um, and you'd be like, I'm citing this video, blah, 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 screw you, blah, blah, blah. 2256 into it, the guy says this, right? Literally, like, that's a citation you have to make for some of these things, because there's not even like the PowerPoint available on the internet. So we thought, hey, people speaking, maybe you could write something and, and we'll publish it. It turns out getting everyone to submit something, editing it, and then publishing it takes a non-trivial amount of work. Um, sorry, I don't know that we realized that going into it. We knew it would take a lot of work, but, but it we're, gonna, we're committed to, by the end of February, have proceedings for 2014 and 15 published as one thing. You'll be able to download it as an ebook. You'll be able to buy it. You'll be able to cite the work that people will get up on stage or present in the next three days. Um, again, if anybody else is involved in other conferences and is interested in doing this, we are happy to tell you about the things that worked and didn't work for us in this process so that maybe you can do it better. But I think the institutional capture of knowledge Not in this... After we accomplish it. Right? After we accomplish it, yeah, we'll give you the good things after we do it successfully. Um, but I think capturing uh, institutionally and as a community the knowledge that is transferred at these events is critically important, and we are lousy at it. 
right? Like absolutely freaking lousy. I mean, people get all busted out of shape about open access of academic papers, but at least there's access, right? There's something there. You can always scam your way into one of these things to get a paper, not that I would encourage that. Um, <laughs> It's hard to scam your way into some stupid YouTube video that you, after the first three minutes, you're like, ah, whatever, I'm out. Uh, YouTube is not an academic thing that you can cite. Anyway, I guess it is, but whatever. Um, some friendly warnings. Um, please read all the uh, announcements and, and warnings in the, in the uh, program. I will say the Hilton has been very nice to us in our time here. They continue to treat us very well. Uh, we would appreciate if you all treated the Hilton well. Um, you know, again, Please avoid bubbles in here because we don't want the Fresnels like blowing up on your head. Uh, but in general, treat the host cell staff politely, treat the, the facility politely. Please don't hack the kiosk. Please don't put card readers on the ATMs. You know the drill, like normal things. You know, if my mom was here, would I really attack this? Thing? No, probably not. Um, maybe, I guess it depends on what kind of family you had. Um, <laughs> If you have questions or concerns, come see a staff member. So something that we focused on this year um, is kind of professionalizing what it means to be staff at a conference like this and start to put together a handbook and some guides to help arm people better. Uh, we realized with things like labs, we're doing a great job at arming people to be skilled at running networks and skilled at handling security incidences and things of that nature. But when we say, hey, come help at the con, here's your t-shirt, go. That's not arming people to be successful. That's not arming them to help you, uh, you know, as an attendee or to you know, make sure that everyone's safe and that kind of thing. So we're starting to get some training together. We're starting to try to get um, you know, everyone on the same page with what good communication looks like, how to interact with people, um, how to keep yourself safe, attendees safe, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you'll note, at, from the beginning, we've always had all the staff wear the same red shirts. It doesn't matter if they're the camera guys or the streaming or security or whatever, we all wear red shirts. If you have any questions at all, come find a red staff shirt. Yeah, red staff shirt. Sorry, I didn't just mean random dude in a red shirt. Like the guy with the hoodie there, he's like, yeah, I won! Like, <laughs> I am staff. Like this. Um, try, try to find someone in a red staff shirt. Um, if they don't know the answer, I do not wear a red staff shirt, but I am always here to help. Um, I should probably put on the shirt. I'll do it on Monday. Um, <laughs> um, please be awesome to each other in general. Again, you can read more of our philosophy on that in the program. I don't want to get into it right now. Um, please wear your badges at all times. That includes th uh, Saturday night at the party, at fire talks, whatever. Uh, you know, we don't track who you are. We don't care. It annoys people like the press and our sponsor, like, who attends? They're like, I don't know, um, carbon-based forms of life that had a credit card, like, or their friends. Um, so I, the only way we have to know that you're supposed to be here is your badge. If we see you walk in the halls and you don't have a badge, we're going to ask you to produce your badge. If you can't, we're going to escort you out until you can find said badge. Um, so also, aren't these awesome badges? <laughs> I, I froze my ass off making these things. Uh, I, and my son, too. Yeah, we, 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 we uh, did it in the late. We got a lot more applause than I did. Uh, we, we, bur we burned them on a laser cutter uh, in our garage over the last two weeks, and uh, it's unheated, except for the kerosene heater and the propane heaters that I had burning. Probably had enough oxygen, but I'm not really sure. So. <laughs> Um, anyway, he knows he didn't. Um, anyway, um, they will kind of clean up too if you rub your finger on them, like it'll spit and whatever. Um, I didn't want to spit on everyone's, um, <laughs> and I guess it was the only solvent I had. So uh, you know, yours may need a little cleaning too. Everyone's cleaning their badge, so I'm going to say all the other stuff. Um, anyway, please wear your badge. Be nice to each other. Be nice to the hotel. If you have questions, if you're if you're concerned, you're feeling uncomfortable, whatever, find a staff member. We'll help you deal with the situation. Capiche? Capiche? Yeah, that's my. I don't know, is that a real word? Okay, good, my dad would say it to me. I thought he was making it up, so. Uh, it, it's not English, and that was the only language he knew. So, um, some other announcements. Um, finding root at 40,000 feet has been canceled and um, been replaced with crypto before computers. Um, I, I'm just the messenger on this one. It's not like I beat him up, man. <laughs> oh! <laughs> So, uh, so if you see a 12-year-old walking north later, uh, <laughs> he's just going home. Like, that's all it is. Everything's cool. Um, 
Speaking of the schedule, the date's wrong in the program printed for Friday. Don't get confused by that. It's like, <laughs> I'll show up on the 34th of January or whatever the hell it says. Um, wireless CTF is now in the Boffett room for Friday and Saturday and Sunday, I guess, we're putting them outdoors? Yeah. Okay, good. So. Okay. Um, video and picture policy. So let's see, let, there's a lot of video related things here. Um, Google, that yeah, was from last year, I left it there, I don't really know. Um, first of all, Ted's here again, uh, and he is, yay, Ted! Yahoo! Um, Ted is the man who wrangles all of the video, he archives it, he has it for sale, um, and he also feeds us video so that we can stream it for free um, on the inner tubes. This year it's streaming on live stream. Hi, all the people watching on live stream. How many people do we have? 300, 300. holy shit. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. You can't watch it from here, so don't try. Um, so, oh yeah, don't stream. No, and my son's like streaming over the cellular. He's like literally watching me on a 90 second delay on a cell phone, costing me money when I'm right freaking here. I'll say it again. <laughs> it's a family event. Family drama. Oh, he's got his phone. Well, that, that ended. I don't know. Okay, uh, where's his settings? It's an iPhone. You just think about it, it just works. Um, we will. He's on Open. Oh, well, go, just, can, yeah, anyway. Um, we will um, uh, make this available for download later for free as well um, off of archive.org. Uh, Internet Archive hosts all our stuff, so thank you to the Internet Archive. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say this now, and people aren't going to like me, and um, I don't get, I know, I don't give a shit. Uh, I, I, I care that you like me. Um, so we have felt for a long time that um, we are the uh, stewards of the things that happen here, and we want the right thing to happen. And we're not trying to make money off of it, and we don't want other people to make money off of it either. So we've never uploaded a single video from ShmooCon to YouTube. Anything that's on YouTube or Google or any of these other freaking websites, I guess that's all the same, right? Um, none of that is stuff that we've done. Other people have done it, that's fine. We release this to the community, but our feeling is this is your information, this is your privacy, your freedom. People shouldn't track you when you watch these things. Internet Archive doesn't track you. We don't track you when you download it off of our website. I'm lucky if I can find the log files most days, usually VAR's full, so it doesn't, doesn't even matter. Um, but we're going to continue to do that, right? Other places don't. It's fine. You can do it. You, it's, it's totally cool. But I would encourage you, again, if you have a means to distribute content from this community in a way that doesn't make you pray to other people's policies, to feeding, you know, providing you are the content, you are the whatever for Facebook and for Google and all that other stuff, do it, right? Even if it's harder, do it yourself. Don't let them do it. So, anyway, there's my rant. Um, what's that? I'll get to, what? Okay. Um, oh, oh, good. Yes, okay. It's good news. Uh, we don't have to cancel the conference. So, um, um, also in the, in the realm of old school, um, we have a picture policy. And yes, woohoo, the old school people whoop, and the new people are like, really, what's that? <laughs> I just snap selfies all the time. Um, the full policy is in the program, but in a nutshell, if you take a picture here, everybody in frame, even if it's the back of their damn head, better agree to you taking a picture, right? And if we see you taking pictures, we're going to ask you, like this is my wife and I, she's, I'm speak, my eyes are open. Um, oh, it's bad. It is bad. Uh, on Facebook. There we go. Take a picture of yourself, take a picture of your friends across a flat backdrop, whatever. Don't stand on stage and take a picture of everybody. Don't stand in the hallway and take a picture of everybody in the hallway, okay? If we see you doing it, we're gonna ask you to stop. If you keep doing it, we're gonna ask you to leave. It's not something we like doing, but it's something that we take seriously. Again, there aren't many conferences out there left doing this, right? We still do it, so please. <laughs> I'm doing what next? Nothing. Okay, I'm doing this next. Okay, um, so I want to mention a few key staff so you know who to go poke if you have questions or concerns. And again, questions here can be like, can you tell me more about how you do this? Because I'm interested. Like, we'll take good feedback, bad feedback, and also like, hey, I want to learn. 
Uh, that's why a lot of us are here. So this is Heidi. She runs Shmoocon. She's a leader of the pack. She's kind of the person of last resort. If you have questions, try to field them somewhere else before you get to her. Um, uh, Ken, not here, not here. Uh, Branson's a surrogate for now, I guess. Um, they're down in labs. If you have questions about the network, you can go down to labs. Look for anyone with a labs badge, which is not a woodcut badge, but it's actually like a, looks like a concert badge. It's white with a blue border. You can ask them questions. Uh, GM1 and Redbeard are either in here. Uh, negative. They're uh, security leads. What? GM left. All right, he's spoken. Um, Bob uh, is right here. He's the guy, speakers pay particular attention to this man because he's the guy that handles kind of the stuff that happens up here. He interfaces with the PSAV, makes sure that the projectors are working, you've got what you need when you get up on stage, right? Okay, good. Um, Matt, for registration, he's our new Tamsin. Tamsin couldn't make it this year for those that know Tamsin. She, unfortunately, oh, we're sad to not have. Well, well this is... anyway, I got nothing to say. Um, uh, Oliver is uh, back there. He's leading up stream video. So if you have questions about stream video, he'll help you out. Uh, Andrea, yeah, Andrea is working taping, um, and I'm a free agent. Like I don't wear the red shirt, but if you need anything and you can't find someone, you can tackle me. I do all kinds of random things. Here. Yeah, except for you, you, according to the restraining order, have to stay farther away than you are now. So, God damn. Um, a couple of things, uh, whoops, I skipped this slide. Uh, there's a, a small contingent of people uh, from Alaska here that I wanted to call out. Uh, the first are Heidi's uh, mom and dad who have retired from Alaska and have moved into our backyard in Maryland. So they are here. They are attending. Uh, yeah, please be nice to them. Um, we would like to see them back at home later. Uh, so if you, if you find out you're somewhere in like Southeast DC tonight at a party and you see them, maybe it's just help get them home safely. That's all we ask. Um, the other person, the man from Alaska, um, to be frank, if it wasn't for this guy, uh, I don't think Heidi and I would be where we are today. Um, the Schmoo Group wouldn't exist. Um, this man, so uh, um, his name's Lance Ahern. Lance, if you want to stand up for a second, you don't have to say standing, but that's Lance. Um, so when I was up in Fairbanks and I was going to school with Heidi and Schmoo was killing my cats in our apartment, um, not intentionally, it was just really cold and he, it was, maybe it was a dog, I don't know, he didn't like the animals. Um, but it was, um, Lance uh, ran the uh, largest ISP in Alaska, uh, Internet Alaska, and uh, he kind of had a band of misfits toys that he hired, and it was Hadi and myself and Shmoo and some other folks, and somehow he placed trust in us to run the largest ISP in the state. And I don't, I mean, the median, yeah, the median age must have been like 22 years old. Um, you know, it was just a bunch of freaking hooligans, and he put a lot of faith and trust in us and let us do what we thought was the right thing, which sometimes was the right thing, sometimes it wasn't. Uh, sorry. <laughs> um, but he allowed us to grow as professionals uh, in this space. And they started another company uh, called Fort Knox, N-O-C-S, not K-N-O-X. That's literally, I think, how you had to answer the phone so people understood what you were saying. Uh, we tried to do a public key-based credit card processing using SET back in 1998 and 1999. Think of how cool it would be if we had succeeded um, <laughs> and not, not burn through millions of dollars of venture capital left it in a smoldering pile in the parking lot. Um, but that said, again, like he brought the band of misfit toys along, and we all went and built this network for him, and built the software, and tried like hell to make this happen. And uh, that during that time, uh, usually when we weren't getting paid because uh, we'd ran out of cash, is when we started the Shrew Group. Um, but again, we had learned because Lance gave us enough rope to harm ourselves with, but also to be successful. Um, and that means the world to myself and Heidi and everyone else. So we wanted to thank you, Lance, uh, for giving us the opportunity. And again, um, I would encourage you, um, you know, my, my personal reflection is, again, I, I went to school for four years, dropped out of college, um, did a lot of stupid shit, but somehow managed to uh, run a company. We run this conference, got a family, kids all seem healthy, they have all their limbs still, you know. Um, even after you're like, go use the laser, no instruction needed. Um, you know, it, it's, um, 
you know, having that flexibility was very, uh, I think, important in this field. I mean, we all talk about how important creativity is to the hacker community and things like that. And I would like to encourage you as you leave here to think about that. How do you enable other people to maybe not make the best of decisions, but at least prevent them from harming themselves too gravely and allowing them to learn and move forward, right? I think that's a critically important thing that we forget. We kind of helicopter parent our way through infosec sometimes, and we get all serious about like, oh, you can't do that, that's bad. Well, maybe bad things have to happen once in a while, or maybe you just let them learn from experience, and the next time the CIO says, holy shit, that hurt. Like, <laughs> we, we really do need this firewall thing that you speak of, or whatever it is. <laughs> firewall, yeah, jeez. So, somebody's wearing a bottom of my firewall shirt today, by the way. I was really thrilled to see that. Um, so um, the schmooball, um, and this is going to be my closing uh, um, thing for the most part. Um, we have schmooballs again this year. And for those that don't know, you open up your bag and you see a little squishy foam rubber toy and you think, oh, that's cute. Um, the point of the schmooball is not just to be. <laughs> All right. She She's over there. There's nothing breakable here, so I'm just going to stand about in this area. Um, but the, <laughs> no, dude, because it'll get embedded like right in my nose. Um, so uh, when we started ShmooCon, uh, our original tenant, uh, or the, what the, one of the big drivers, frankly, is uh, uh, Beetle, who uh, was in the group at the time. Myself and a few other folks were at Black Hat, and there was some dude on stage saying something that was just patently false. Like, they were on stage, one and one is four, and everybody's writing it down, the press is reporting on it, everyone thinks this is the coolest thing in the world. They're like, why is no one saying bullshit to this guy? And, and Beetle and I had a bit of a rep at the time for being the assholes in the audience, being like, oh, you're wrong! And there's just limits to how much of a jerk you want to be. So, um, shockingly, for those that know me, I do have limits about how big of a jerk I want to be. <laughs> um, and so we thought, well, we should run a conference, and we should hold the speakers accountable, and we should get the audience more engaged. Well, how do you do that? You know, oh, we can put up microphones and have people queue and ask questions. Whatever. Like, nobody wants to do that. Because normally, first of all, a lot of people don't want to be that person that stands up and, and sit, stands up in front of everyone and says, I disagree. Because that's a big deal, because now the spotlight's on you. And some people really want to be that person, and no one else wants to hear that person, right? Like, <laughs> let me tell you about my Aunt Kim. She had her identity stolen through an SSL attack. You're like, oh, Jesus, God. What? This is a talk on, it was on lock picking. Like, what happened? <laughs> uh, and so what we came up with ultimately was this thing. So what this is is a physical manifestation of the bullshit flag, right? If you disagree with the speaker, oh, by the way, speakers, pay attention, because sometimes <laughs> they get caught off guard by this. Um, if you disagree with the speaker, throw the ball at them. Okay? Let them know your disagreement. You can do it like all seventh grade style, like, ooh, I don't know, who's that guy, right? <laughs> Was it me? Like, um, it, and, and what typically happens is one person throws it, you'll see like 20 or 30 more come up, right? Because um, a lot of times people are thinking, I don't agree with that. Do you not agree with me? Because uh, this is a tough one here, Quadling. Um, can, oh, can I define throw? Yes, yeah, so this is very important. So first of all, when we, when we purchased these, we went through a little bit of an engineering exercise where we said, hey, person who sells tchotchke stuff with branding on it, can you pick up all the stress balls around you and throw them at the person next to you? They're like, why is that? I'm like, if I hear them say, ow, I don't want that one. <laughs> that one's too heavy, has a little too much inertia. Um, so um, what we came up with were these, and in general, if you politely lob them, they are not going to hurt, um, like that. So, and I'm right-handed, so that was an amazing thing that just occurred. <laughs> um, if, by chance, you have brought a hydraulic Shmoocon firing cannon that shoots a shmoo ball at over 200 miles an hour, please don't aim it at my chest again, okay? <laughs> So it bro seriously, dude, like that was when we were snowed in for a snowpocalypse, and it was um, that thing motored. Um, but seriously, I would encourage you to throw them, but just people be polite about it and recognize like usually they have their laptop in like liquid. So if you just purposely like go right or left, well, well that's cool. Um, and if you lose your schmoo ball through that process, you can 
come find me. I'll try to find you another shmoo ball or something or something like that. Um, anyway, so that's the that's the purpose of the shmoo ball. Um, a few more uh, very quick comments because I think our first speaker is here and we're supposed to start at 3:30. So. Um, this year, I think information security really turned the corner. And I had a whole rant about the hacker community being dead and the state of things and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm out of time, so I don't get to give my rant. Sorry, this has all been very staid and boring, I know. Um, yeah, give me a shmoo for that. Um, we've had way more press requests than ever, right? Like, cybersecurity, haha, I used the word. Um, it, fuck you. So here's the deal. <laughs> This domain has changed so much in the last 20 years. It doesn't computer security. It isn't infosec anymore, right? It's transcended information security as we know it as a term. It's transcended computer security as we know it as a term. When you say security, people say, oh, you work at ADT? <laughs> so we can't say that. You know what everyone in the country knows when you use the term what you do? Cybersecurity. Right, thank you. So you can say drink all you want, guys, but this is the reality. This is a multidiscipline domain that we live in now, right? It is an above-the-fold problem that the president talks about, that every magazine and newspaper talk about. Every CIO and CEO and executive and a board of directors talks about this problem. So, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little fired up. Wow, oh, yeah. So, jeez, about my cyber. There, there's the new meme for you. Um, but the press, we even had press showing up here today dead cold at the frickin' at registration, being like, I'm here to cover the event. That's not how we do things here, guys. We have a press list. If you're not on it, you don't get in. And the press list is of a limited size. There's only a handful that we let in. But we got big boys here now. We got Politico. We got NBC, okay? These are, yeah, what? Like, it's not Jim's blog anymore? Like, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. There's more money in this, which means less information, right? Means less tools at our disposal. A greater gap between the haves and the have-nots. You're inside doing the work and seeing the data, or you're outside looking in, seeing less and less data with less and less access, right? That's the reality of the hacker community today. That's the new reality that we have to deal with. That's why we stick to our morals of take the picture with just the people that are supposed to have the picture in it, right? Host the data yourself, secure your own damn servers, do it on your own because you can't trust anybody else. Anyway. All right, with that, uh, we're gonna start in, I guess, uh, I don't know, three minutes or something, so thanks a bunch. You didn't like it? <laughs>